friends, welcome to this little video, really the first of mine that uh, I hope will be the first of more, delving into some software synthesizers and making electronic music in the box, specifically mostly in Ableton Live since that's what I use, and mostly electronic Berlin School styled sequence ambient uh, stuff. Uh, a shout out to some of my uh, inspirations out there, Signs of Life and Synth Seeker and uh, a bunch of other people who do this and do it way better than me and hopefully I can help to become part of that same community of uh, creators in some way. Anyway, so my name is Brad and what I'm going to show you today is uh, an instrument that I sort of created that mixes hardware and software. Uh, it's sort of a playable sequencer, a playable Euclidean sequencer. So it is going to be using high MPE or RPE2, sorry, high RPE2, which is a dual mode sequencer. There are, uh, it has a pulse sequencer, which I can show you here, uh, which is really focused on, I would say, primarily on uh, percussion and drums. And tied to that in this same software is a Euclidean uh, sequencer, which can also be used uh, to do some of the same things, in fact. And I believe there is uh, at least one and maybe a couple other videos out on YouTube that show that. But what I want to do with it is use it to do more, again, Berlin school styled uh, pluck sequences, um, more sort of melodic and tonal in nature. Um, and what I want to do is control the software with the MIDI fighter twister and all these lovely knobs. Months back, I started trying to do something like this on my push. Uh, tying the sequencer, mapping it to some of the knobs on the push, which gave me a start, but I didn't feel like the interface really took it as far as I thought I could. Then seeing lots of uh, stuff about the MIDI fighter twister, uh, lights went off and I said, I think that's what'll do it. And so uh, this is what I've been working on. I still think I have some more to develop on how these can work together, but I wanna show you what I've done so far. So. Let's look at the high RPE2 real quick. So it is a uh, Euclidean uh, sequencer. It has eight lanes uh, that are set up. I'm going to turn off a bunch of them and just focus on one at a time. So um, this is the first lane. It is visualized here. Um, so th it has a whole bunch of settings, and I'm not going to go in depth in high RPE2 but there's, you know, on off mute and solo, you can randomize things, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I will be, if we look down here in the bottom right of the uh, interface, I am have everything sort of snapped to the scale of, it says D sharp, I would say E flat minor pentatonic. So I can keep everything uh, in that mode uh, for what I'm doing here. So um, again, we have as, like m pretty much most of the, um, Euclidean sequencers out there, we have a series of steps. So this first uh, parameter here defines how many steps are there in the circle that it's going to go around. Okay. Uh, this is set to eight steps. Most of the ones I have are eight. I think I have a few here that are, um, this one's 12. I do have one 12 thrown in, but I know I have, um, oops, hitting my wrong buttons, a couple 16 steps. Um, so again, you can do some things with polymeters and polyrhythms, etc., by doing some odd numbers, you know, nine on one and eight on another, 13, 16, etc., and really get some complicated and interesting interplay. But I'm focusing on things mostly in sort of traditional within a 4-4. Four, four. So we've got eights, 16s, and one twelve, and they're just to uh, shake things up a little bit. Um, so what I'm controlling with the MIDI fighter is the first thing is the first and third row of knobs is just turning each lane on and off. So whether they are going to play or not is with those buttons. Also that those same knobs, uh, when I twist them, I'm changing the number of pulses, which is the second value here. So how many times when it's going around that circle of eight possible pulses, there's all eight, how many pulses is it going to play? And again, Euclidean, I'm not going to get into the mathematics of Euclidean synthesizer or sequencers and how it divides those up, um, but you can look into that. 
So I'm going to change the value of the number of pulses with the rotation, okay, on those. Um, the other aspects I am going to control is with the other sets of knobs. I have the second and the fourth rows. When I turn those on, the, the buttons, what it's going to do, if we look at this value here, sync speed, um, it's going to change it from doing eighth notes to doing sixteenth notes. And so basically, since the this is eight steps, when I do it to sixteen, it will go around the circle twice uh, in the amount of time it would do once when it's at eight. So you're sort of doubling the speed on these. So it's kind of a ratcheting effect of sorts, um, which allows you to get some, again, different rhythmic interplay going on there. So that's pressing those, turning them. So I'm gonna press that, that's 1 16th. Turning them changes the rotation. So the rotation is on that circle, where does the first beat or pulse hit? So when it's at zero, okay, when this, uh, parameters at zero, it's going to hit the first pulse on the first beat when it's at, oops, wrong one. Uh, when I move it to one, it's going to move to the second, et cetera, around the circle. So you can sort of change where and how the different lanes are weaving through each other, okay, by rotating those. And so that, again, is going to be um, the second series of knobs. So that's what these are doing. The notes that are going to be played um, are slightly different on each lane. There's a couple ways. The sort of traditional way, if we look at, um, I think the traditional, I would say the default way that uh, high RPE does this is you set a default uh, note for that particular lane, and you can play the same note, and that's the default. It will keep playing the same note on each lane, um, but you can modulate, and that's, again, one of the real beauties of I think all the high plugins, all the plugins in general, but the sequencers in particular that have all these modulation options. So this option of the note that it's playing, I'm going to be using this uh, sample and hold in the first one to modulate which notes are going to be played each time um, something is hit there. And again, since everything is um, snapping to that E flat uh, minor pentatonic scale, it's only going to be picking notes that will fit uh, within that, okay? Um, one of the interesting things is you can actually set which lanes will snap to scale. So they don't all, not every single lane has to snap to the scale. So that gives you some interesting possibilities for jazz, uh, <laughs> if you wanna go down that road. But, so so this is gonna be modulating. So each lane is gonna have a, a, um, a sort of range of notes that it can pick to pulse on that, right? which again, I say is sort of the default. What I, the other option is that I have set this to a specific sequence. So you can choose, okay, within the eight steps, or you can go all the way up to the total 32 steps that high RP2 is capable of. You can set specific notes that will play on each of those pulses, okay? Um, so some of the lanes I have that, so it is, is going to give a little more predictability to certain of the lanes in a way, okay? so. What I've done is basically create a set of parameters, a range of possibilities in which I can play this instrument, okay? Um, so that's most of what's going on here. Um, I think the only other thing that I'm really doing with these is uh, I'm using one of these uh, modulators down here to uh, change the velocity of some of the notes. I think I'm using a sample and hold for that one, if I'm not mistaken, yes this fourth modulator here. Uh, so uh, that's what I have going on. Again, there's other things you can modulate. I'm not going to go into the details on high RPE2, but that's what we got going on. All right. So uh, I'm basically going to start playing this instrument. I have a couple other tracks. There's um, sort of a pad uh, that's playing underneath. It's being actually controlled by another instance of high RPE2 at a much slower rate. Again, so it gives a little bit of randomness to those, uh, so it's not always exactly the same. And then I think I have a loop of sort of background wash sounds, more tinkly sort of atmospheres. So I'm gonna play this. Uh, I'm not sort of composing a piece necessarily. I wanna show what this can do. And so uh, I'll probably talk over a little bit and say what I'm doing with some of these things, but we may just listen a bit as it's going along. So here goes.
excitement mounts. All right, let's start the first lane. So again, with the playability of this, I like that I can build, again, physically. Let's, there we go, a little more movement. there. Rotate it a bit. Let's throw another lane in here. The 16 divisions. some more. to sort of tell me a little bit of where it's going to start. Don't want all of them sort of starting on the same place. Build another one. some of the lower lanes. Let's 
see what happens if I ratchet up another one. Sweet. Dreaming in tangerines. Alright, I think we'll take this down a little towards the end. And there we have it. So that's uh, the instrument. I think it has some great creative potential here. And as I said, I'm kind of just getting started with some of this. Uh, I haven't explored too many other rhythmic options. Again, as I mentioned, uh, some of the sort of polyrhythmic or polymeter options with even an odd uh, lanes going. Um, there's a whole bunch of other features, even more modulation, perhaps. Um, as I think I mentioned, um, you can, again, modulate, let's say, the uh, pulses, or not the pulses, the um, rotation, so that you have something sort of going around in a pattern. All right, let's start it, I guess. And I modulate it here. How about that? Um, yeah, these are running kind of fast, but let me see if I can do this. Do the second lane rotation. I didn't mean to do this, but it's probably going too fast. Uh, I can slow it down. There we go. So with that, I'm going to turn up the number. The others, anyway, you see what I'm doing. Um, sorry, I didn't mean to. I wasn't going to go sort of into this depth. Uh, I can do that maybe another time. But um, so that, again, the modulation allows you to really build some other things. What I was focusing on really for this video was the hardware aspect and playing the sequencer. But as hopefully you can see, there are so many options there in high RPE2 to really create some fascinating uh, sequences. So, uh, in the comments, I suppose, as always, let me know what you think, uh, what you think worked, what you'd like to see more of, what are some ideas that maybe I hadn't thought of, of how I can make this whole setup work. I have some other options of filling in with the, uh, the twister, as well as I have a push and a uh, launch pad of using some other buttons to um, mute certain tracks or solo tracks. Uh, or solo certain lanes so that you can sort of just make a, a particular part of the sequence of pop and then um, bring all the others in, et cetera, et cetera. So like I said, a range of options. So give me ideas, uh, comments, and whatnot. And thanks for watching. I hope to do some more videos. As hopefully you heard, I can delve more into high RPE2 as well as some of the other uh, sequencers from high plugins. That's hy-plugins.com. Uh, go and get some demos. There are some free versions with uh, limited feature sets that let you get a feel for uh, how they work. And like I said, I think there's so much there. And hopefully you can take advantage of that to enhance your creativity. A shout out to some of the people who've inspired me uh, on YouTube. Uh, Signs of Life, of course, and the wonderful tutorials, Synth Seeker, uh, Venus Theory, um, all of the amazing... Uh, YouTubers that help me learn some of the artistry of what's going on here. So thanks a lot and come back for some more as I get things going. Mm -hmm.